You know, 2022 was a was a grand washout, you know, for growth stocks and for crypto. Uh, and so anything associated with it, especially that was growthy, that was, you know, had big, big cost and revenue shrinking, uh, got hammered as 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 many of, of the crypto stocks did. The outlook for crypto is not horrible, but it's not great. Uh, we've got regulatory, you know, headwinds that we didn't have before. We've got time to heal and, and rebuild narrative. And so people are going to cut costs and survive this transition period. Uh, Crypto is not going away. What's been interesting is the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum has held pretty steady the last few months. And it's actually gone up in the last few days. Uh, if you had to sell, there was a lot of bad news out there you sold. If you were leveraged, you got out of your leverage. And so it's a pretty clean market right now. There's still some overhangs, right? DCG and, and Genesis and Gemini, uh, that will play out in the next quarter. Uh, that's not going to be great. Uh, I don't think it will include a lot of selling. It's just not good news. Uh, we're leaning in where we think it's appropriate, uh, but we're also sober understanding that 23 is a year if you want to survive. People bought Bitcoin because the central banks around the world had monetary policy like we'd never seen, right? And so you were debasing fiat currency by you know, creating this inflationary wave that came. And so it was a perfect inflation hedge in lots of ways. It went from 8,000 to 60,000. And then when Pal took out his golden hammer and started beating inflation on the head, uh, Bitcoin and lots of other assets that had benefited from all that easy money came down. And I think what will drive price action in the future is some sense that governments won't be able to keep tight fiscal policy and tight monetary policy for very long. Right, the pressures of populism get to governments and they spend too much. Um, that and constant adoption. And you're seeing, even in this terrible bear market of crypto, you're seeing you know, new ways that people can participate in, the, in, in Bitcoin and the crypto market. Right? Fidelity is a perfect case in point. They're just turning it on to their retail customers. And it's a really easy to use app and it's really well explained. And so I think you know, people like to call the the death of crypto because we've had a sell-off. I, I, I just don't think they're right. Plenty. I, you know, I started in 2013, and so, uh, you know, we went from 200 to 1,000 and right back to 200, then up, you know, up, down, and up and down. Um, painful. You know, I always tell people to sell something along the way, uh, right? This is not, you know, trees don't grow to the sky in, in a straight line. Uh, and it's a really volatile asset, right? It remains a 60 vol asset, which is, you know, three to four times the vol of the, uh, the S&P. It's really dangerous to, to think that, you know, when you, you have one black swan, you're gonna see them everywhere, right? Like that you're gonna have criminal organizations all over the place and, you know, these places run by sociopaths. It's, it's just not the case. Uh, I'm not saying that every other exchange is playing by every single rule, uh, right? A lot of exchanges are, uh, under some assault from regulators for KYC AML violations, often in the past, right? When they started, they, they didn't uh, have near as robust protections against who was using their exchange as they do now. Um, but I don't think, you know, under every rock, there's a guy stealing your money.